All right, y'all. Welcome to the show. I am not wearing any pants. <laughs> I'm serious. It's actually kind of warm today. I had the heat on and now it's like uh, I'm sweating and I haven't even started to talk yet. So I said, you know what? Pants be gone. And they are. This is the benefit. This is the benefit of uh, only seeing, you know, only seeing the upper body. I can do whatever I want down there. <laughs> All right, we're getting off to a weird start on today's show, but on a serious note, uh, I have a show today that is jam-packed with substance. Um, we're going to start off fun in a second, because I'm going to react to Nikki Haley's uh, presidential campaign, which just launched. She released a video. Uh, it was super sad. We'll talk about that. Uh, Trump wants to br bring back all different forms of the death penalty. That's always interesting. We'll get into that. And then uh, later on in the show today, we'll talk about that absolutely disastrous earthquake in Turkey and how the damage could have been avoided or certainly massively reduced. And Biden and Republicans are going at it. And Biden is doubling down and tripling down and going for the jugular. And the Republicans are actually crying uncle, which is an interesting sight to see. So... Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it here. So Nikki Haley is a robot. She's a total donor creation. She's propped up by lobbyists and big money. She's the former uh, UN ambassador and the former governor of South Carolina. And uh, she got her head all gassed up. She has a colossal ego. And so she thinks, yes, I am going to run for president and I'm going to be the savior of not only the Republican Party, but the entire country. So she released this ad, and uh, we're going we're gonna to break it down as we go here. The railroad tracks divided the town by race. I was the proud daughter of Indian immigrants. Not black, not white. I was different. But my mom would always say, your job is not to focus on the differences, but the similarities. And my parents reminded me and my siblings every day how blessed we were to live in America. Some look at our past as evidence that America's founding principles are bad. They say the promise of freedom is just made up. Some think our ideas are not just wrong, but racist and evil. Nothing could be further from the truth. I have seen evil. In China, they commit genocide. In Iran, they murder their own people for challenging the government. In the U.S., they illegally invade countries that didn't attack them, which leads to the deaths of hundreds of thousands or millions of people. And they do extrajudicial detention with no due process and torture at Guantanamo Bay. Look, we could play this game all day long if you want. You want to cite uh, evil baddie country X that does evil baddie thing Y? Well, that's fair, and we could discuss that. But also, don't look through rose-colored glasses at the United States. I'm not saying it's fully equal. I'm not doing a false equivalence thing here or whatever. But... This is, this is their game. This is their move. This is their trick. And also, she brings up the founding of the country and then disputes the idea of racism when, I mean, that is totally counterfactual. I mean, you could say what you want to say about the system now, and there's certainly a much more nuanced conversation to be had now about the system. But when you talk about the founding, they literally had the three-fifths compromise. The idea that, like, it was such an enlightened situation and the Constitution is above reproach and it's basically a holy document from a demigod, is idiotic. It's dumb. And I'm sure you're getting the gist of it already. We're going to keep going here. But the fact of the matter is, she's running a presidential campaign in 1992. Like, how do you think this is going to appeal? To like, have you been hermetically sealed in a chamber for the past eight years? How do you think this is good politics? When a woman tells you about watching soldiers throw her baby into a fire, it puts things in perspective. Even on our worst day, we are blessed to live in America. I was born and raised in South Carolina, so I have seen the very best of our country. People here threw out the old, tired political establishment and demanded accountability for their tax dollars. Okay, I love this. They threw out the old political establishment and put her in, so she's saying, like, I'm the new ideas person. And then look at the... Look at some of the headlines that are on the screen here. Haley rips house budget. Governor Haley calls for tax cuts and tort reform. Know that old guard that you were just besmirching and putting down, this is exactly the same ideas that they're in favor of. So you're no different. And by the way, this is the pitch of her campaign. Her campaign is, 
bro, we need new people. But she just means when it comes to, like, age and skin color and gender. Because she represents the exact same ideas as George W. Bush, as Donald Trump, as the entire political establishment. Industry reports called us the beast of the Southeast, which I love. People came by the thousands for fresh starts. Moms and dads held their heads up high. Children learned that it was always it's a great day in South Carolina. It's a great day. It's a great day. A great day. A great day in South Carolina. We were strong. We were proud. And when evil did come, police in South Carolina are looking for a gunman following a shooting at a church. Several in victims. Carolina. We don't know the uh, severity. We turned away from fear, toward God and the values that still make our country the freest and greatest in the world. We must turn in that direction again. Republicans have lost the popular vote in seven out of the last eight presidential elections. That has to change. Okay, now she's spitting. <laughs> I mean, that's true. That This is part of her pitch, and it's totally accurate. But of course, she's wholly incapable of changing that. Joe Biden's record is abysmal, but that shouldn't come as a surprise. The Washington establishment has failed us over and over and over again. I can't. I get so triggered by deeply establishment politicians posturing like they're anti-establishment. In no way, shape, or form are you anti-establishment. You are swimming in big donor money. The only reason you think you have a prayer at winning this thing is because you're propped up by billionaires and corporations who are picking you because they know you're going to give them their next round of tax cuts. It's time for a new generation of leadership to rediscover fiscal responsibility, secure our border, and strengthen our country, our pride, and our purpose. Some people look at America and see vulnerability. The socialist left sees an opportunity to rewrite history. The socialist left, and for those of you who are just listening to this in podcast form, on screen right now is Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi. You know how many socialists are on screen right now? Donut, zero. And I say that because Bernie isn't even a socialist. He's a social Democrat. He calls himself a democratic socialist. But if you actually go by like textbook direct definitions of political ideology, he's more of a social Democrat than anything else. He's like a New Deal type, a welfare statist. He's like an FDR type person. Maybe in his ideal form, he would be more democratic socialist, which is post-capitalist than social democratic, uh, if I'm being kind. But he reads to me as just sort of a standard social democrat. And they're showing that as fear monger like, ooh, they want you to have health care and free college. <laughs> Even though, by the way, three of the four on stage do not want that. <laughs> three of the four in this picture do not want that. I wish they did. I wish they did. I wish they did want everybody to have free health care. I wish they did want everybody to have free college. I wish they did want unionization and higher wages and a stronger social safety net and higher taxes on the wealthy and ending the wars and unwinding the, the empire and the military industrial complex. I wish they did. You put, she put Nancy Pelosi on the screen to attack the socialist left. I can't stand how disconnected these people are from reality. I just can't take it. It drives me crazy. It is such a pet peeve of mine. This is Nancy Pelosi who says she's a proud capitalist. She defended insider trading among Congress people by saying, well, we believe in a free market and we can participate in it. A socialist? Jesus Christ. China and Russia are on the march. They all think we can be bullied, kicked around. You should know this about me. I don't put up with bullies. And when you kick back, it hurts them more if you're wearing heels. I'm Nikki Haley, oh. and I'm running for president. Oh. Oh, oh my God, she really just said that. She really just said that. This is the dirty little secret. Republicans pretend to hate identity politics, and then the second they feel like they can play that game and they can weaponize identity, oh my God, they're all in. They love it more than anything else. Like, remember when Clarence Thomas was accused of sexual harassment, and he, of course, was trying to be a Supreme Court justice, what did he say in the hearings over that? He said, this is a high-tech lynching. So all of a sudden, race. Race is super important. Race comes out of nowhere. 
you know, Candace Owens, classic. Oh, I'm anti-identity politics. She uses identity all the time to deflect criticism. Dave Rubin, you know, it, he says he's anti-identity politics, and it's like, well, I'm a gay conservative. Who cares about the fact that you're gay? If you don't like playing identity politics, don't play identity politics. Shut up about your sexuality. So, anti-identity politics, but I kick back, and when I do, I wear high heels. <laughs> do you get it? Do you get it? Because I am a woman. Because I have a vagina. So I wear the heels because the high heels are the feminine and I'm leaning into the fact that I am a female and I'm, go I'm saying new generation, new generation including female, person of color, but same old tax cuts, same old corruption, same old legalized bribery, same old support of the military industrial complex and Wall Street and the big moneyed interests. Oh my God. Oh, it's so sad. Take a look at this. Shout out to David Dole from the Rational National. Uh, so he responded to her ad. She tweeted it. A great day in South Carolina. They rank 34th in the country in healthcare, 44th in education, 18 in the economy, 36 in infrastructure, 38 in opportunity, 31 in fiscal stability, 46 in crime and corrections, and 26 in natural environment. They're not top 15 in any category. In any category. Now, look, I'm not... I'm not besmirching South Carolina. In fact, I have like a soft spot for a lot of the southern states. Everybody knows I'm the last lefty on earth that likes Florida, but it's largely because of the weather. <laughs> I'm one of those like seasonally depressed people who can't stand the Northeast, you know, this time of year. And South Carolina sort of falls into that same category of like, it's just beautiful weather. I love the, I do, I do love the scenery. I do love the, uh, the warmth. I think it's a beautiful state, but look, numbers are numbers. Right. And so she's acting like she's pff, me, bro. I'm the savior. I'm the future. Anyway, don't look at any of my governing results, please. I'd appreciate that. And then I also have this for you. So um, here's some facts about Nikki Haley. She's a loyal defender of Trump as a member of his administration. Um, she repeatedly would play defense for him. Can't name a single policy difference from Trump. We actually covered that video. She was on Sean Hannity's show, and Sean Hannity asked her, to his credit, actually asked a decent question. Like, hey, where do you disagree with him on policy? And her response was, <laughs> See, what happened was, the sun was in my eyes, and me and Craig and them was down by the Safeway, and we thought that if we went over there with the stuff and things, then what we would find out is that, a new phone, who this? As governor of South Carolina... Uh, she pushed the MAGA agenda, and part of that is signed an abortion ban with no exceptions for rape or incest and allowed for jailing providers. Super extreme, super fringe. Americans don't agree with that. Endorsed a plan to end Medicare as we know it as, quote, common sense. Pushed for tax cuts for the top 1%. Refused to expand Medicaid. Do you have any idea how many thousands of people, you know, potentially millions in South Carolina, got screwed because she just wouldn't accept the Medicaid expansion, promised not to support election deniers, then campaign for them, and said she wouldn't run for president if Trump ran, and then, boom, now she went back on her words, word, and she's doing exactly that. So, look, Nikki Haley said it before, I'll say it again. She's the Kamala Harris of the Republican Party. Beloved by the donor class, beloved by the establishment. Um, honestly low-key supported by the media, but there's no there there. There's no base of support. There's no, you know, screaming fans at a sold-out rally for Nikki Haley. She's a total big money creation. And uh, believe you me, the new trick, which they're leaning into heavily, is... Uh, Change on the outside, continuity on the inside, which, by the way, is a phrase that has been used, I think, accurately to describe Obama as well. It's change on the outside. So she's a woman. She's a person of color. She's young. So, the, so they look at these surface level features and go, see, different, different, vote for that, new, change, interesting. But internally, she could not be more pro-establishment. I mean, again, she's George W. Bush or Donald, Donald Trump in a mask. That's what she is. She cannot distinguish or differentiate herself in any way, shape, or form. And so a lot of people have the theory that she's just auditioning for a VP slot right now as she's running. Um, I would argue maybe as a secondary thing, 
But primarily, I think she may be dumb enough to think, no, I can win this thing. I can top Trump. I can top DeSantis. <laughs> Look, also, it, this is hilarious to point out, too. She released her, her presidential campaign announcement at 6.38 a.m. on Valentine's Day. Which just shows, like, what do you have, a concrete head? Like, do you have no brain? Why would you do that? Just simple little, you know, stupid political mishaps. So I expect a lot more of that moving forward. But uh, it's shaping up right now to be a rerun of 2016, as much as it pains me to say it. Because you're going to have 412 Republicans who want to hop in. They want to be the one. They're going to flounder. They're going to shit the bed. And it's going to turn it over very likely to Trump, possibly to DeSantis. But, hey, at least the debates will be interesting. <laughs> I'm, imagine this robot trying to respond to Donald Trump. Imagine this robot, this canned platitude machine, fortune cookie ass speaker, trying to respond to our big wet boy. It ain't going to happen. You know, sir, I think that's very impolite, and I'm going to kick back with my high heels on. All right. <laughs> Let me know how that goes for you. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.